The theme of the day is infinite connections. One mind, infinite connections. And in religious science, we talk a lot about the one mind. And in science of mind, of course, we talk about the mind and the one mind and God's mind. What are we talking about when we, when we refer to the mind in this way? And um, it's important that we know what the mind is because it's all about the mind. And our connection to it and how we use it. And I just got to tell my tech team real quick. All right, <laughs> I'm back. Okay, uh, the, the magic and wonderment of Zoom is terrific. So um, yeah, so it's good to know uh, what we're talking about when we talk about one mind. And um, like driving a car. Uh, you need to know how that thing works. When you get on the road, you're expected to drive. You need to know how to stop, how to brake, what the rules are, what the limits are. And we need to know what our limits are as, as people. And it's all about the mind. And when I was teaching my kids how to drive, I tell them, listen, you're getting behind the wheel of a two-ton missile of death. You need to know how this thing operates. You need to know everything, everything you can know, all the rules and everything to be on top of this. So we've got a very powerful tool, mind. And it behooves us to know more about it and more about how it works. So what is the religious science concept of mind? To explain that, we're going to get into the science part of religious science a little and um, why science? Well, I think deep down, no matter what your religious stripe, no matter what your political stripe, we all have a deep respect for science, for scientific pursuits, for um, the fruits that science gives us. And even if you're one of the people that say, ah, science and scientists, I don't need any science. Well, as you pick up your cell phone to call your friend <laughs> and tell them you don't need science uh, over the phone, uh, there's no way we can escape science. Everything that we see around us from when we get up in the morning to when we go to bed at night has been the result of some scientific pursuit. So whether you openly acknowledge that you respect science or whether you uh, I do respect for science. We all still respect its truth, I think. So it's interesting that science has often been seen as the adversary of spirituality, not its partner, its adversary, because we deal in the spiritual world with things that we can't see, and science deals with things that with facts. So you can touch and hold and put in a beaker. But science, as I've mentioned here a few times before, science and spirituality actually agree on the most fundamental point there is. And what is that? They 100% agree. Um, science and spirituality agree in the point that the universe began. Science says the universe began with a bang. Spirituality says, maybe uh, Christianity says that the universe began, everything began with a word. What we believe that beginning was is kind of immaterial to this conversation. The main thing that we need to know is that science and spirituality agree that we had a beginning. There was a start to this. And that acknowledgement, that universal acknowledgement is very important. Um, so we're gonna get into a little bit more science here. And uh, of course, 
it seems like a no-brainer, okay? When I say, hey, we had a beginning. Of course, Dave, yeah, we're all here, all right? We had a beginning, we know we began, but stick with me. Sir Isaac Newton, you know, the guy that had a apple ball in his head and, and uh, discovered gravity, uh, he wrote some, he discovered some fundamental ideas about physics. And one of those ideas is the idea around inertia. The two laws of inertia. The first law being that a mass at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by some force. That means that I have my little birdie statue here that's right next to me. This little birdie statue is completely inert inertia. So if I set this on the ground and nothing else touched it and it wasn't affected by anything else, it would stay exactly where I put it forever. Now, the second law of uh, inertia is that uh, an object that is traveling will maintain that speed as long as there's nothing else that acts upon it. So if I throw a baseball, if nothing else affected that baseball, it would go in a straight line forever. But air, wind, gravity, all of these things affect the ball and they make it go so far, not very far, but they make it go so far and then it plops on the ground. But in the absolute, what I want to focus on is that first law. A mass at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by an external force. So if this is true, if this is true, um, then we look at the universe before it was created. We go way back before there was anything. And just before the beginning, there is this nothingness. So if we apply our laws of inertia to this, if a mass at rest stays at rest, then what does a nothing at rest stay at? If you have a great vast nothingness, it seems to me that it would remain nothing. And nothing would ever happen. But that's not the case. There was an external force. There was a force present that brought about this beginning. See, because if you have a beginning, then you must have a beginner. Must. Otherwise, things don't begin. Something must get things started. And this thing, this beginner, this external force we call mind. That is the power that we're dealing with. We call that God and God is mind and law. And so the emergence of mind and law brought about the entire universe. That's what this philosophy explores is that the creator of the universe, the beginner, the initiant, the cause of the universe to come to be, we say is intelligent and knows what it was doing. And so we're all here on purpose. Um, now, how did, what does that have to do with you? The, the topic today is one mind, infinite connections. So let's fast forward um, 18, 18 billion years. That's how long it took us to get here from the creation of the universe. So science says they've added it up roughly 18 billion years or so, or take a few million. And let's fast forward from the beginning of time to right now, right here and now, you and me, you, in your living room, sitting in your chair, 
on, at your kitchen table, wherever you happen to be right now. 18 billion years is a long time. I mean, for sure, the power that created the universe has been dissipated throughout infinity now. Now that that original power has been spread out to the corners and the edges of the universe, billions of light years, the power of God has been spread. And so as such, it's been kind of diluted, right? Because it's so big and spread over such a large area, uh, it maybe has lost some steam. That's reasonable to think. But if we apply our law of inertia that we've just been talking about, let's apply that to the power of mind, to the power of God. And so we can say that the power of God goes on and on and on, unless acted upon by an external force to limit it, to change it, reduce it. Well, bingo. The good news is that we don't believe that there is any other force other than God. There is no external force limiting God's power, limiting God's reach, limiting God's creative ability or potential. This means that as much power and immense uh, uh, miraculous events, all of the things that went in that very special time at the creation of the universe 18 billion years ago, this means that that power is every bit as potent today, now, as it was when it created everything. Because there is no external force to limit God. So this is great. This means that we've got um, that we've got a lot to be, we got a lot that we have access to. We have a lot of power that we have access to. We are connected to our creator. And let me catch up with my notes here. So knowing that there is nothing that uh, can limit the power of God, what we have to do now is just realize our connection to it. And how are we connected to God? In a very particular way, human beings are special. And how are we special? Well, we're special because we can conceive of this one mind. And we can use this one mind, our conception of this one mind, to create and manifest in our own lives. To have an effect on our own little personal universes that we carry around with us. And we can create anything by tapping into the power of this one mind. This one mind and this one law that responds to it without exception and without fail, just as it did 18 billion years ago when the word was spoken, when the idea was hatched. I don't know how it happened. And we can only know so much about God. If you're inside of a house, you can learn everything about the inside of that house. You can learn how to use all the gadgets and appliances, and you find out where the water is and where the bathroom is, and you can live a happy life inside of that house, and you can just learn how to be in there and everything. One thing that you cannot do is tell what color the house is. We're inside the house. God is outside the house. We can't tell everything about a God that knows so much more than we do. The only thing that we can do is try to divine its 
its nature and how we might communicate with it, how we might use it to create. Just as the universe was created, we're using that same magic because the one mind is our mind. So now that we have this conception of what mind is and we have an idea of the immense power that we're dealing with why does the mind respond to us because that's what it does it responds and it creates together with the law it responds and creates responds and creates right up to what we believe. So for your homework, I wanna to try to explore this concept of the mind and how it creates. And we're gonna do an experiment. And I really want you to try this. I'm gonna do it too, because I could always know more I could always stand to know more about my connection to spirit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a belief. We're going to take something that we want to know. Okay. Um, This is, this could be anything. And the smart Alex out there, and I can, I could just see my wife saying, um, okay, I want to know all the lottery numbers. And that is um, something that you could know. But looking deeper into that, why would you want to know the lottery numbers? Well, so that you can win the lottery. Well, why do you want to win the lottery? Well, so that I can have unlimited money. So, well, why do you want that? Well, you want to know that you're secure and safe and that you will be. Forever. That's what we want to know. And the lottery and money is a vehicle to know that. And we have set it up in our minds. It's like, yeah, if we had unlimited money, then yeah, I can be happy and safe and secure and, and all of these things. But these are just things that I want to know. I can know that I'm safe and secure right now. If that's what I want to get to eventually, I can know that now. And I don't have to win the lottery to know it. I don't have to be a millionaire. I don't have to be a billionaire to know that I'm safe and secure and surrounded by love right now. So if we say, I want to win the lottery, I want to know the lottery numbers, we're giving God a very narrow field to bring us what we actually want. What we actually want is safety and security in this example. So let's cut out the middle man, if you will, or the middle person. Let's cut that out and say, look, God, I don't know how you're going to to reveal this to me. I don't know how you're going to reveal this knowing to me. This is what I want to know. So pick a knowing and write it down. If it's centered around safety and you want to know that you're safe, then write that down. I know that I am safe. And put that into the mind that is always safe. Put that into the mind that already knows what you want to know. And every time that you get that feeling, ah, I'm I'm not safe. You know, you have to remind yourself of what you don't have. And you remember, oh, I'm not safe. I'm not safe. No, you go back to your, your affirmation. And you link up with that one mind and you say, my mind is God's mind. God's mind is my mind. And that mind of God knows 
safety. It's not in danger. It's, it never has been. That is what you're aligning with. Maybe it's an answer to a question that you have. You write down, I know this. I know this because the one mind that knows everything knows it. So that is the power that we're aligning with. And chart your progress. Because at the end of a, of a week or however long, this state of mind will become manifest in front of you. And you will have a new sense of this knowing. And it's amazing. And don't put any limits on God. God communicates in so many ways. God moves in mysterious ways. And it's true. You don't know how your messages and your manifestations of safety are going to arrive. It could be something you see on TV. It could be somebody you meet at the supermarket. It could be a rock that you stumble over as you're getting ready to take out the garbage. No one knows how God is going to communicate that to you, but it will happen. So that is your homework. Write down something that you want to know and declare that you know it. And then let it go into the mind of the universe and let it work for you. God doesn't say, eh, okay. God doesn't say, mm, all right, I guess. God doesn't say, oh, hang on a second. Wait, 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 wait. God doesn't say any of those things. God says, yes. You believe it. God says, yes. And that yes is the yes that brought us all here together now. It's the yes that created the entire universe. That is the yes that we're playing with, that we're dealing with. That is the power that we're dealing with. That loving, giving yes. All right, so you got your homework? Awesome. Let's take that into prayer. And it is here and now right where we're sitting, right where we are, that we declare that there is one. One God, one spirit, one infinite presence, one mind. And as this mind is all the qualities of good that we know, all the light, the love, the power, the wisdom, the joy, and the beauty, I know that as God is all of these things in the great, I am all of these things in the small. I know that I am a mere shred, a mere shard of the infinite presence, forever linked, forever bound, forever nurtured and cared for, and forever sharing in all of the qualities that I've just listed, and giving more and more and more all the time. And I'm so grateful to know this. I'm grateful to proclaim it. I'm grateful to experience it. I am grateful for a universe and a God that I can believe something and say, God, take it. Here. And I can let it go. And God says, leave it with me. It's a spirit and a power that I can trust to bring me my good because that's the only thing it has ever done. And that's the only thing it will ever do. So it's with this gratitude 
with it did he expect to see? With this loving consideration that I release these words without a care, I don't know how they'll be acted upon. The only thing I know is that they will be and that they are right now acted upon by the mind of a loving universe that only says yes with an exclamation point yes and let us all release these words knowing that they're true and done knowing that we fully expect manifestation as a result of our knowing with the words and so it is thank you <laughs>